Um, welcome everybody to the Configuration Management Initiative 2.0 updates here in Seattle. Um, I'm Fabian Bircher, I work for Nuvole. Um, you can find me on uh, Twitter or, or on drupal.org. And hi everybody, I'm Mike Potter, I'm a software architect at Phase 2 Technology and you can find me mostly on drupal.org. Um, just a little bit of background, I work for uh, Nuvole, which is a distributed team in Italy, Belgium and Czech Republic. Most of our clients are international organizations or institutions and so they often want us to work uh, with mo multiple people on the same projects at the same time and uh, do fast uh, and automated update at, to their sites. Or, or I mean they, they need to have frequent configuration changes, so we need to have a safe workflow for doing that. So we can't do napkin stuff. Um, my colleagues were also pioneers with configuration management back in early days of Drupal. And uh, I've just continued with this <laughs> tradition, so, so to say. And Fabian forgot to mention he's the maintainer of the config split module, <laughs> so that's a little relevant today too. Um, and uh, I work for Phase 2. Phase 2 is a, a digital experience agency. We do a lot of Drupal work. Um, we have a lot of big clients, some of which are listed there. Um, so we don't just do Drupal, but we also do strategy and DevOps and user experience. But mainly my experience comes from I'm the co-maintainer of the features module and the maintainer of config actions in Drupal 8 uh, and was the, the open atrium person in Drupal 7. So have done a lot of configuration management stuff over the years. Yeah, uh, so just a brief outline of what, what we're going to talk about it in this session. And we just had the introductions. We're going to have a brief history of um, where configuration management comes from, um, why there is a second edition of configuration management or the configuration management initiatives, some of the key concepts that you need to understand, um, and then like the new um, event, event subscriber, um, that we're going to have in the next version of Drupal, or 8.8 .8 as we plan, um, the kind of next steps of where we're going and where you can come in and help us make this a reality. So configuration management, CMI, was probably one of the most successful initiatives in, in Drupal 8. If, if you've all been using Drupal 8, I see a lot of heads nodding. Uh, so in, in the past, we had features in D7 and in D8. We now have declarative configuration. So configuration is no longer code. It's actual data stored in YAML files and in the database. And there's you know, a common workflow now built into core where when you're deploying from dev to staged prod, you, you do the config export on your dev, and you go to your prod, and you do your config import. And it solves you know, a, lot of, a lot of the problems. And there are contrib modules that you can use to extend that, but Core was very specific on the problem it was trying to, to, to solve. Um, but in the contrib space, you know, we've seen enhancements to what Core does because there's more problems to be solved than just that standard workflow. So you have things like uh, config filter and config split that allow you to have different configuration based on what split is active and you typically have a split for each of your environments like you have a dev split with the develop module turned on and you have a prod split with you know Aquia connector turned on something like that uh, there's modules like config ignore that allow you to ignore certain configuration there's read only that's a great one for production where you don't want to allow your client or, or anybody else to make any config changes on production so you can lock that down uh, and then there's still, you know, features out there uh, with the little asterisk next to it that, that people still use sometimes for configuration management, but it's now more intended to, to bundle configuration uh, into modules uh, rather than being used as a, as a workflow. And if you use it for workflow, you have all the same problems that you did in, in D7. So that's some of the areas that Contrib has expanded on what's in core by default. Yeah, and uh, so... And we have the Configuration Management 2.0 because the first version of the Configuration Management Initiative, um, they were done. They, they achieved their goal. Um, but as we've seen, that we needed to do, to do more. And we, we've identified that Core needs to do more as well um, so that we have a, a standardized way of doing things and these problems affect basically everyone, so it makes sense. There's three pillars in uh, 
CMI too. Uh, the first one is documentation. Um, unfortunately, um, there's currently not very many people working on this, but uh, all of these three things could potentially happen in parallel. But we have a little bit of trouble with the manpower, so this is a great way to come in. Um, the documentation about configuration management that we currently have is not very opinionated, which leads to, you can do this, but maybe we should have it a little bit better to say, this is a good idea, and having the active configuration storage in your files is maybe not a good idea. Um, then the environment-specific configuration, that's targeted now for 8.8, .8, and that is essentially a slimmed-down version of config split in core. And then we have the cross-site configuration workflows. So that, that's when you want to use configuration from one side and have them on another side. That's the distributions use case but um, we don't have any consensus in the community of, of how this should happen. Um, so from the initiative, we, this, this is one of our goals to solve, um, but unless in the wider community and the maintainers of distributions come together and say how we want to solve it, we, we cannot just come up with a um, solution for core uh, before Contrib um, has a solution. Um, for the organization, um, Alex, um, me, Mike, and Mladen are the initiative leads. Uh, we have a bi-weekly meeting um, in the last few weeks. Uh, it was weekly on, on Slack. Um, and the best way to get, we, we have links, is uh, the project CMI2. Um, if you have suggestion to like documentation <laughs> to add more links and make this a better page, then we're very happy to um, improve that. So CMI2 started uh, several versions ago and has already had some successes. So if you, you know, if, if you have only come to North America DrupalCon since a year ago, there's, there's already been developments here. So in 8.6 that came out last fall, um, we were able to get in a new piece of functionality called install from config. Uh, there used to be a distribution called config installer that you could use. So if you had exported your site config, you could then use that site config to install a brand new Drupal site that was basically a clone of that site. Uh, and so bringing that into core in 8.6, uh, the way it works, if you haven't used it, it's actually really a cool feature. Um, you can do it a couple different ways. You can create your normal config sync directory, define that in your settings.php file that's part of your site. Uh, and now when you install, uh, it's, if you use the install from config option in the UI, it will actually see that you have that configuration exported and it will use that. Um, if you're doing profiles, uh, you can also put that config sync directory within your profile directory as a config sync and it will use that. Uh, if you're using Drush, uh, as of 9.4, we actually have this dash dash existing config option. So instead of you know saying site install standard, you say site install existing config and it will go install whatever site you exported your configuration from. Uh, there's still an outstanding issue, so you know one of the principles here is we want to try to solve some problems, but we're never going to do the 100% solution. We want to get something in and then incrementally improve upon that. Uh, and so one of the issues right now is you can't do uh, existing config using profiles that have hook install, uh, mainly because some profiles use hook install to mess with the config, and, and that doesn't make a very clean workflow here. Uh, standard is unfortunately one of the ones that has this problem. Uh, and so there's actually an issue that's linked to the bottom of the page there to, uh, to fix standard. And it's actually fairly far along. So if you actually want to get in and, and maybe help do final testing or RTBC on an issue, they've moved the config stuff into the proper install directories and have cleaned up their hook. So that should help with that. Yeah, and uh, then in 8.7, which is uh, released soon, um, we have a new configuration memory storage. Um, th this is basically all the stuff that we were able to break out from the more complex patch that we're um, now targeting for 8.8. .8. Um, the memory storage is probably only for people who work with this and, and for tests. Um, the same with the config storage copy, copy utility trait, which allows you to um, make copies of the configuration storage, um, like the same everywhere, because a lot of previous implementations, um, this code has been happening in lots of places and it was incomplete, inc including in one of the uh, core cases. 
So if, if you don't want to know about how to copy all the collections and all of the intricacies, you can just use this trait and be done. With. Um, for 8.8, um, we already have uh, committed the config export storage, um, which allows us to have a uh, standardized workflow for export and configuration. Um, until 8.7, Drupal Core didn't have any sort of API or any place to hook into the workflow for exporting or importing configuration. We will have um, um, storage transform events and um, the experimental config environment module that we will talk about in a second. Yeah, so really quick, uh, just to review CMI1, uh, the, the way Drupal 8 works is you have your sync storage, which is the green area, which is your file system. You have your active storage in the database, which is the, the blue box. You do your, your import and export between those two. And if you want to, you know, read configuration, there's two ways you can do it. You can grab the immutable kind of read-only configuration, and that applies overrides. Uh, so that's where you can override things in settings or in modules. Um, or you can get the read-write version. You can call get editable and get a read-write version of config, which doesn't have uh, the overrides. So that's what's the basic workflow in Drupal right now. Yeah. And then the, the um, contrib solution, the CMI one and a half, um, basically all it does is just swap out the um, config sync storage and uh, applies all the magic there. Uh, so it, in, in core, it's, it's a very clean, very precision incision uh, of um, getting a different kind of workflow working. Um, and um, so, you know, great solution. Let's put this in core. But uh, even though there is many modules that already enhance the workflow through config filter, um, there, there's a couple of problems, and, and I think we should do better. Uh, if you want to know exactly how this works, I had a session at DrupalCon Vienna um, where I explained in much more detail of how this magic works in, in different situations. Um, but if you want to do this, if you want to use this API, you have to create plugins and that have very many methods. And you have to know precisely how the storage is actually used. And you have to kind of in, infer like what happens and um, the, all the different methods they play together in, in this import and export steps. Um, so we want to make it simpler. So we have this config storage transformer. Um, we, we will do this uh, with events rather than plugins. And um, the, you will get the whole storage as, uh, with the event. And you can just massage it into the way um, you, you want it to be. And so this is uh, not only useful for um, where the, in the import export, but uh, we will use this in, in any place in Drupal core where, where config storage is used. Um, though we will more. Um, make it as a recipe rather than an API. So we, we will tell you, because uh, dispatching an event is fairly common and it's not an API as such. So we will do it that way. Um, so to go back to uh, the schematics, so we, we want to, the, um, the magic to happen for the export and for the import, because then you know exactly what you're doing um, and what you're reacting to. Whereas when you do the config filter version, um, you, you react on reading and writing and deleting and reading all and listing all. And uh, it's, it's much more complex to, to make it work the way you, you want it to work and not have bugs. Um, so if, um, and actually, so the export version, as I said before, we had this um, export storage um, API now. So this, this part is almost taken care of. We need to find a creative solution now for the, for the import one. <laughs> but we're, we'll be working on that um, now during this week. Um, so really quick, with config split, what happens now is you take that config filter and you have the new storage system. And it's creating these splits that are like different, different subdirectories of your config sync directory. So now you have like a dev folder and a prod folder and a stage folder. And you decide what modules you want to be enabled or disabled in those different splits. You decide what different configuration you want, like maybe different solar configuration. And when you do your import, it merges 
your default configuration with whatever environment specific configuration you might have enables those modules overwrites those config and then does that when you export it so that's how it works right now and what we'd like to do in core is provide something similar to that but for a very specific use case so in a way the config environment module which is going to be a new experimental module in 8.8 we we may or may not have it stable by 8.8 but it's going to be started as experimental this is going to be an example of using that config transform event system so config environment will have event subscribers that that you know hook into that import and export process and it will allow you to create whatever environments you want like dev stage and prod you would list like what modules do you want enabled like I want devel in dev I want aqua connector in prod you can list what configuration you want to change like maybe your solar you know server configuration and then there'll be a UI and command line interface for things like Drush and console to let you switch environments so you're on dev you switch to prod now the aqua connector module gets installed devel gets uninstalled and, and you're on prod but the, the difference here between this and config split is you're only going to be able to have one environment active at any given time. You're, you know, you're either dev or you're prod, you're, you're not a mix of both. With config split, you could have multiple splits turned on at the same time and they could interact and it was all very complicated. So again, trying to simplify this uh, for core. Um, because changing environments is already complicated enough and some of these issues already exist in config split. This isn't a simple matter of sticking a JavaScript flag on your site you know, in your top toolbar to let you switch environments. Switching environments causes modules to get enabled and uninstalled. Uh, and, and like I said, given that example of Devel and Aqua Connector, for example. Uh, and installing modules has, has side effects. Um, so you're basically, when you switch environments, you're doing like a config import. Uh, and that may, that may change things on the site. So you need to, you know, verify the changes, like understand the changes, just like you do with a, with a config import. And so the two, you know, workflows that, that we're looking at is the first workflow is, is really the 80% the use case of deploying from dev to stage to prod, which is what CMI1 was all about uh, solving. So here you would, you know, set the desired environment, you know, maybe in settings.php based on environment variables, um, or you add a new command to your deployment script, like a drush command. So at the same time that you're doing kind of your update DB and your config import, you know, somewhere in there you say, hey, make this site prod, uh, and then when it does the import, you get the, the prod version of that. Um, and that's a fairly straightforward workflow. We'll, we'll talk about problems in a second. But then the other workflow is, you know, potentially you want to take your prod server down to your local development to have, you know, the most updated content. Um, well, it, your environment is part of the database now. So as soon as you spin that up locally, you're now prod. Uh, and you've got to be careful with that, because if you're using things like, you know, API keys with, you know, Google Analytics, now you may be polluting your client's Google Analytics because it thinks you're prod. So you obviously, again, with a command line or something, you would switch to dev before you actually start hitting the site. So it's, it's complicated. Yeah, it, it's complicated. And, and th this just scratching the surface. Um, th there's um, many, like, complexities that come with it. Um, for example, what about people who wanted to use the zip archive that, you know, the download from from the config and then you go to the other side and upload the zip. Uh, Drupal core um, supports this workflow, so whatever we put in core also needs to support this workflow. Um, with config filter, there was no hope for, for that. Um, but uh, in, in the new version, um, thanks to the API that's already committed to 8.8, we, we can simply hook into that and it uses the same process as for exporting um, with, with Rush. Um, as Mike just mentioned, if you use uh, the database dump from production, um, this has interesting side effects. And but for this, we also have a sort of a solution with, with the switching um, command um, or, or the UI uh, translations. Uh, I know in the US it's uh, often a little less of a, tr a problem than in Europe. Um, um, Drupal has this great uh, translation management and uh, language and multilingual. But so the configuration can be translated. That means if you have environment specific configuration, the environment specific translation also have to be handled in some way. Uh, for that, we all already have a, a, a solution as well. But we, we don't have solutions about what happens with updates. So 
Um, just to give you an example with the uh, Apria connector and the develop modules that are enabled in different environments, if you run, um, if you update your site on the development environment, you usually get, you do like the composer update, you get the new version of Devel and the new version of Apria connector. You run the update hooks, but only Devel is enabled, installed, so the Devel um, config gets changed because of the update hook. You export the configuration, um, and then you deploy it. And in the deployment, like when you export the configuration, the uh, Devel config gets split off and it's in a separate way. And so it will not be imported when you import the configuration again. But what happens is you do the com composer install, which updates the modules, then you run the AppDB, which runs the update hooks of the Acker connector, and I'm not sure if I lost anyone already. <laughs> but the, the update hooks um, only run in, in production in the production environment, and currently the API, or I don't know if we can call it like that, but we expect the update hooks to be able to do all sorts of things. And if you change configuration because of the schema, for example, changed in the update hook, and this update hook only ran in production, um, then there's not really a good way of uh, then importing the configuration again, um, which doesn't reflect this uh, updated configuration. So you, you basically, the import would then revert what the update hook did, which obviously is not something that we want. Uh, currently with config split, there is a workaround because you can, you can add as a part of your um, deployment process, you can config split export the production split, which, which will not touch the rest of the configuration, but just export the configuration that is uh, bundled in, in the production split. And then when you import in, <coughs> as a next step, the, it gets merged together and, and the, the, the good configuration is there and, and it will not be changed. Um, but we don't control the workflow in, in core. We, we just um, have, have this API and, and the workflow is, is up to everybody else and, and to, you know, which, which version or like which order of trash commands you run is, is up to you. Um, the, the same is what about changes to configuration on production, um, especially with, with this configuration um, in different environments. It, it's very suggestive that you could have environment specific configuration on production and then you change it and we don't really have any way of um, dealing with this. Uh, you could say, okay, we ignore it and in, like the config ignore does, but then you don't have any way of updating it anymore. So it's like, we need to find a good solution that takes care of all of this. Um, and uh, yeah, you're well, very welcome to come and <laughs> join the conversation about this. Um, yeah, ah, you can take this. Yeah, so uh, so the summary is we, we need some help. Uh, you know, if you're if you're at Dries's keynote this morning and you saw some of the initiatives that have gone into court recently, like uh, Layout Builder, which is awesome, and uh, you know Media, and he put up those slides about there's 312 contributors and all the nice names. Uh, CMI2 is like 10 contributors right now. Uh, and you know, I think you know, for people that run run the real sites, like none none of the sites phase two runs run without config split. Like that's part of our standard workflow now. So we're basically dependent upon a contrib module to do you know really basic deployment functionality. It'd be really nice if that was in core. So if you kind of share that feeling, if you deal with config a lot, uh, and you know you're looking to get involved in in, in some core initiative work. Uh, you know, come come join us. We're doing a sprint this Friday, so we're going to have a table in the sprint room. Uh, you can do documentation. We can bring you up to speed. Maybe just talk about some of these issues. Try to come up with some solutions. Uh, write some code. Uh, config environment is out there. We we have issues. So we have patches. It's got a really basic UI on it right now. Uh, so where there's some UI work as well. Uh, so there's lots of things that you can help with. We have uh, four months to get this in before 8.8's 8 .8, uh, alpha deadline. Uh, after 8.8, .8, then things are going to start getting frozen in core while they do the deprecation, and so you probably wouldn't see this until Drupal 9. So, you know, we, we've got a timeline. We'd really like to get this in, so please come help if you're interested. Yeah, and now the um, final slides. Um, join us for the contribution opportunities. Um, there will be a first-time contributor workshop again. 
and um, mentored contribution uh, as well. Um, it's all on this floor. And uh, don't forget to fill out the, um, the survey so that we have your feedback. It helps us and it helps the Drupal Association to select future sessions. So thank you very much for your attention. We should still have five minutes uh, for Q&A. Um, please use the microphone. This is supposed to be a recorded session. So if you can speak to the microphone, then your question also gets recorded. Have you guys come up with a good way to uh, install default content? Uh, like on the fresh site install in the beginning? Um, yes. Um, we, we have talked about this a, a bit, but it's not really in, in scope for what we're trying to do right now. Okay. Um, but if, if you're passionate about it, we, we can uh, you know, coordinate with you as well. Yeah, there, there's a whole issue around content as config and that weird middle line of some things, you know, menu links and taxonomy terms and things that are kind of config, web kind of forms. content. Web forms is another one. Um, but it's not currently one of our three pillars because, yeah, it, that's, we need to talk a lot about that before we can put something like that in core. Uh, with regards to the production modules that, that are, what you want to do when gathering something, uh, would it maybe make more sense to kind of establish with a standard to not disable production modules in environments and rather enable like a toggle in those modules that could be set in the Yeah, um, that, that was one of the solutions that, that we, we probably will favor. And, and in any case, I mean, the name config split comes from splitting, and this sounds kind of dangerous because it, it's, a, it's a powerful tool. Um, and I've, every time I, I recommend it to someone, like, do not um, have split for only production. And if you do have modules, like very sparingly, the, the whole point of the configuration management initiative uh, was to be able to stage configuration across different environments and to to have, like there's a lot of um, checks uh, in, in, in core to make sure it's safe to stage. So if you do config ignore, you, you void the warranty a bit and you say, like, <laughs> I don't want to be safe. And um, so we, we need to find like a good solution for this. And, and I think probably the best is to document that you should not have um, too many modules in production only. And if you do, um, or have the modules that are production only kind of modules, make them have a, some sort of toggle or config o use config overrides. I think it's not in everybody's mind, but there's a fantastic solution for most of these things with config override um, that, that works in most of the cases in this. Yeah, I think it would make sense for models that interact with external APIs yeah. back and forth to be able to like quick top of the off. Yeah, like yeah. The, the, the config read only module that uh, we mentioned, uh, it, it's meant to be installed all the time. Um, and you, you have like a, a toggle in settings of PHP, you say config read only is on, and then it will not allow you to, to change configuration anymore. And, and I think this is a great solution that more modules should adopt that have like served this use case like Graphic oh, Connector and others. Yeah, and I was gonna say it, it's it goes back to what Fabian said about you know dictating your your de your deployment workflow. And you know if we're gonna allow config environment to let you create your own environments, like what I would do is have dev stage prod. Stage is really all of my prod modules. And so you, you do your testing, you verify everything works, but you've got different you know API keys and things. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you go to prod you're not disabling any modules or installing any modules, you're just changing config, changing overrides. You know, that's a safer thing, but that would be like, okay, do we want to dictate that everybody has to have stage and prod and that's the workflow? Like, you know, you, you don't really do that in core either. So again, it might be documentation. Sean? Do you still see uh, features as a um, useful module for the narrow use case that it was originally meant for, which is fundamentally Yeah, you, you, you know my answer to this one, Sean. Like, I, I've been telling people to stop using features now for a couple of years. Um, use it to bundle stuff. I still use it sometimes in distros to, to bundle things, but you still have the same dependency problems you did in D7 in a lot of areas. So don't use features for, for deploying configuration. You shouldn't have a feature revert all in your deployment script ever anywhere anymore in D8. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.